This is NewHampshireCrossCountry.com, powered by Ryan's Alley. We're coming at you today from the Battle of the Border here in Hudson, New Hampshire. Right next to that Massachusetts border, we got some Massachusetts teams joining us today. Uh, this year's Meat Hub is brought to you by Bees Tees. They got some screen printing, embroidery, and so much more. They're out of uh, Keene and they have a new store in Manchester as well. This is going to be our boys varsity race. So let's go ahead and find out what we have going on today. Um, top teams to watch from New Hampshire. New Hampshire ranked number one, BG, Bishop Girton. Number six is Cole Brown. They are without Aiden Cox, who we're gonna hear from in just a moment. Number eight, Wyndham. And number nine, Londonderry. That might be a good battle to watch, see if they can switch up their ranking positions. We also have from Massachusetts, Marshfield, uh, as well as D3 ranked number four, Tungsboro. On the individual side of things, I'll throw it over to Aiden Cox to tell us who we're looking at. All right, we have CVNAs, Co-Browns, top three for, for today, Lars Hogney, Tyler Kazik, and Jamie Leno. Um, then we have BG's Nate Bonikowski, who's had a breakout year this year in cross country and track. And um, then we have Pinkertons, Luke Brennan and Ethan Charles, Wyndham's Michael Killian, Sandboard's Jared, Jared and Tyson Khalil, and Londonderry's Ryan Fort, 14. And for Massachusetts, we have Marshfield's Drew Pesco, Needham's Kyler, and Needham's Tyler, Kyler McNatt. All right, Aiden, so you got a little bit of experience racing against some of those names that we just heard from. Who do you think uh, is the one to watch today? Um. I think Marshfield definitely has some good runners, like just being from New Hampshire though, I don't know specifically, but um, definitely look out for Jared Khalil and um, Tyson. Uh, yeah, Tyson Khalil and Nate Fondakowski of BG, who is really, I think he might be, be the favorite in this race for New Hampshire. Well, you said he's having a breakout year. We'll see if it continues on this flat, fast course. Uh, mostly flat, excellent race conditions here today. Normally this, uh, this course is a little bit soft this year. A lot of rains made it a little bit harder packed, a little bit easier to run on, a bit quicker there, but there are still some soft spots. Uh, weather today is looking very good for cross country racing. Uh, beautiful fall day. We're in the 60s, low 60s right now. Tiny bit of wind, but nothing too significant. Half their race is going to be in the woods, and we can see absolutely no sun. It's overcast as the flag goes up, gun goes up, and we have a start. This is your 2021 boys varsity race here at Battle of the Border, pitting New Hampshire versus Massachusetts, and these boys are coming at us jockeying for those positions. Early lead from Winnicunit. Their team is looking pretty good up front. A little bit of a smile and a thumbs up from Salem. That's right, I saw you. And we'll go ahead, get ready for our next spot, half mile or so in. There's our lead cart, followed by our lead runner all alone up front. On Nikowski. You can see BG. A little over half a mile in. And it looks like he's actually got a teammate right behind him in second now. Followed, one, two. followed by Needham, there first. Perfect, perfect. Then we got a good looking pack as we get going from there. There we go, Mikey. Here's Sanborn, Sanborn, Wyndham, Pinkerton, London Derry, Cole Brown, Marshfield with a couple more. BG has five past us now. Come on, Baxter. Definitely early on in the race, probably a little bit past that half mile mark. And we can see a lot of these guys still jockeying for these spots. A lot of race left to go. Uh, we did see that that breakout like you thought we might out front. Definitely, Nate Bonikowski definitely goes out hard. We had that in track. D1 championships. He's doing the same tactic, it seems like, in this race. We'll see how he holds up throughout the race. But definitely getting stronger as each race throughout the season, so. Yeah, and as a track athlete, track superstar, this is gonna be a good course for that. Not a ton of hills going on. Uh, those that do happen, they're pretty gradual and they're over yeah. pretty quick, so. Good race course for a track athlete. 
Of course, Aiden's able to join us today. He is not in this race. His team is, though. So, Aiden, just give us a quick update how your season's looking going forward. Yeah, I'm doing a lot better. I just coming off a little injury, but should be back next week hoping to race that Black Bear. All right, well, yeah. we, we look forward to seeing that, and we're going to go check out what's going on at the One Mile. Hey, Fonikowski, leading the way. Looks like he's got a pretty good gap, and he's in, he, he's in, uh, Nike uh, fast shoes, not spikes. Two for Bishop Gear. Yeah, BG's number two need coming them through. Coming up. See if you There's need the Galeos boys. boys. There's Lars Holdney. Holdney. Lars Holdney. Sanborn with Brenham from Pitcherton. <laughs> Jay Money right there. Jay Leno. That is the Khalil brothers. Just Here comes T Money <laughs> charging down the hill. And Bishop Gordon's already got five in right there. Yeah. Five. Yeah. They, I think that's Pinkerton second or third. That's that. Oh, what Binker, is, what or, Bishop Girton's doing this year is pretty, pretty incredible. I mean, they went from being decent last year to just being phenomenal this year. Got some more Needham and Marshfield up here. Get a little bit of buy-in, and that can go a long way. So that's seven for Bishop Girton. That's a BG pretty solidly in control. Of this um, be interesting to see. Uh, Oh, Fondikowski usually goes out pretty hard. Uh, yeah. See if anyone tries to go after him. But three of the Conant boys, we'll have to take them on in D3s. I didn't see their top guy go through, but I'm guessing I missed them. Ethan Vitello's pretty pretty solid and likes to be at the front. Fifth Conant, I'm guessing. Campbell throws and Merrimack throw. So it definitely looked like, uh, oh, sorry. you know, Bishop Girton uh, leading the way. But job, guys. what what were we seeing behind them? I really a lot of it was um, kind of packed in. There was a few maybe. Marshfield and Marshfield Needham. Needham. There was a couple of Pinkerton boys as well. Yeah. There was like three or four close up there. <laughs> and then that. Uh, Co Brown pack, although yeah, yeah, I think their back end is a little further back. down the line. Yeah, their back ends towards the back. Yeah, yeah pretty mixed up there in the middle. Yeah, but I'd say definitely for sure. Uh, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of good contenders today. Things should be a little bit easier to decipher when they come around for the second second lap. Yeah, because that's when things start to really spread out. Okay, we're a little bit in front of that two mile, about 50 meters, and we see our leader coming through now. Fondakowski still, solid lead. And if we take a little bit wider view, we can see second place is now in pitcher as well from Needham. Needham, then Jared Khalil from Sanborn. Lars Hogney from Co Brown having a good race. Uh, then Michael Killian of Wyndham, Luke Brennan of Londonderry. Um, yeah. Again, Fonikowski leading it, going through that two mile position. About 10 20 or so. Stay on him. Can start thinking team battle here. Another Bishop Curtin. Second for Wyndham, second for Sanborn, third for Bishop Gurton, fourth for Bishop Gurton, two three for Cove Brown. Pinkerton also in there, so it's a tight team race, definitely. So pretty close, harder to call right now, but we do know that BG's up there, Pinkerton's doing pretty well. Tongsboro from Massachusetts. I think B DG might be winning it. It's hard to tell right now, though. It's pre still pretty tight. Yeah, like you said, a lot of close battles with a mile left. I mean, I know I was commentating with your sister a couple of weeks ago, and she says two mile mark, that's where she puts the hammer down. Yeah. It's a good spot. We like, saw in the girls' race. Sorry about the finish. There's a lot of people here. Definitely really crowded, and the service is not as well, so we apologize if we missed that. 
Yeah, and like we saw with the girls side of things, the leader at the two mile was not the winner. So yeah. a lot of things can happen in that stretch. A lot of changes happen, definitely. We can see it's just a steady pack of boys coming through now. Definitely a lot more runners in this boys race than the girls race. So it's a bit more difficult to tell who's who over like the team battle right now. So. Okay, we're gonna go ahead, get ourselves to the finish line, and we'll throw it over to about half mile to go in the race with Mike and Davio. A little chase closer. by Needham. Needham's reeling him in. And then we've uh, got Khalil. Kyler McNatt of Needham. There. There's, there's Lars Hoagie in fifth, sitting in fifth, leading the Co-Brown assault. Let's go, Lars. Nice job, and Lars. Uh, Killian Here comes from Luke. Wyndham as well. And Luke Brennan. Luke Brennan. Yeah, it's definitely Luke. It's two for Bishop Curtin. And then BG second, one there is first. Here comes BG's third. third. There's Tyson Khalil. Wyndham's second. There's, there's Jay Money, Jay, Crow Jamie Brown's Lano. Second. Crow Brown's third. Being followed by T Money. There's a Tyler Kazik with a T. Got a few Marshfield up here. Yep. Yeah. Three for Bishop here. BG. That's their fourth. That's their fourth. That's their yep. fourth. Yep. fourth. They had a fourth. redhead kid in third. Couple so teams. who have we seen? Two Khalils for Sanborn. Three Cole Brown. There's our fifth I think Bishop Girton. Two Pinkerton and two Londonderry. Three Cole Brown. Three Cole Brown. So here's. That's five for BG. What yeah. about and for Wyndham? Three Wyndham's for Wyndham. Yeah. Third. Third. Two or three for Needham. Here's Needham's. Pinkerton's third. Two or three for yeah. Needham's fourth. Yeah. I think that's Needham's fourth, yeah. Bish BG's sixth. It's Londonderry's third. He should have this by a lot. Yeah. So I think it's going to be Needham. Needham for right second. Right in second, there's Sanborn's third. Mm -hmm. Wyndham's fifth, I think. Be interested to see that uh, finish between uh, yeah. Ponikowski and McNatt. Yeah. That should be a good one. Because he was catching them. Yep. He might run out of time, though. There's Pinkerton has at least five through. And they're six. Fourth, so. fifth, and six. So they're they're really feeling the effects without having Aiden up front with a low yeah. stick. Yeah, for sure. I think this might be the uh, glass marsh field. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they put a lot through. Let's go, John. No, no, that's the second. Come on, point. And Needham as well. Just put a couple through in that pack. Yeah. Um, I think there, Needham there, might definitely. be in the two spot. And then there's Co Brown's last. Well, then again, we still see two Needham, so that would have been their fifth. Yeah. So maybe Needham's, Needham's not sitting as pretty as we thought. Yeah. I think Pinkerton looked decent up there as well. Yeah, they had a couple guys pretty low score. Yeah. But definitely Bishop Gurton has this in the bag. From yeah, like we, which you would expect. Yeah. <laughs> if you're sitting at New Hampshire's number one and then the next... <laughs> Ranked team in New Hampshire is Co Brown. Co Brown, without their yeah, top right. Gun. Yeah. Yeah, I think really Co Brown only holds on to that six with with Aiden because that's a well, and I think uh, big big. You know, I, I think, and while I'm involved with the the rankings on a weekly basis, I think you know they they they've been maintaining their position. The idea of Aiden running right. And uh, we're all hoping, obviously, that he will be come championship time. But at some point, you know, they're going to have to they're going to have to go down in the rankings until we see proof that he's back up and running. I would think. Yeah. Gator in sight. A few ticks past that 15 minute mark. Should see our leader coming around the corner any second now. Needham. Big move, big changes like we see in the girls' race. 15, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. And Khalil. Khalil came back on Fondakowski. 
So I think that was clean thirty. Kyler with the win. Khalil second. Fondakowski fifteen thirty. Fondakowski getting third there. Windom. Windom. Michael Killian. Go Browns first. Big PR. And these boys are starting to get a little bit closer. Looks like we've got another one from Pinkerton. BG. Londonderry. Sean O'Keefe. Tyson Khalil. These boys all under that 16. Here we go. Another battle. Another BG. Jamie Lano and Tyler Kasich. That's three for Cole Brown. I think three for BG. Marshfield, Tugsboro, Pinkerton, BG. BG right behind the mess. Coming at 16.25. Definitely some fast times. Alvin crossing the line on their home course. Another BG coming through. Needham is, or Wyndham. Wyndham looking over his shoulder, sees BG. I believe that's their fourth or fifth. Great atmosphere here today. Very loud crowd. A lot of boys happy with their times. Let's a couple more get under that 17 minute barrier. BG, they definitely have five now. Great team race though. Let's we'll see. Thank BG though. Needham, South, Milford. Sanborn with another Winnicunit, Paris South, Trinity, Winnicunit. <laughs> Lot of them. That's three Pinkerton coming across together. Strong finish from Melbourne on his home course. Good race between Cole Brown, Winnicunit, Sanborn right there, Wyndham with another. Marshfield, South, Winnicunit, Winnicunit. Cole Brown's fifth yeah. just went through. Cole Brown with a pair. About seven in now. I think BG though had a strong top five. So did Needham as well. Yes. Needham got that low number in there. Yeah, great. A lot of changes. You saw Fondakowski going through the two mile with a big lead. Then he got past. By two guys in Jared Khalil and uh, Needham runner. So, again, a lot of changes in that last mile. Again, we think that Needham runner was Kyler McNatt. Not 100% sure as it is out of state. Definitely ranked pretty high coming in. their times today. Yeah, definitely good to see. I, I know looking at faces, you obviously pain, see pain, but you see a lot of excitement as well yeah, when they look over at that clock. I think we've got a lot of happy guys here. Again, absolutely excellent race weather. I think this is the best weather we've had all year for yeah, cross-country racing. Perfect. Sneak finish there. Again, it's just a steady stream of these boys coming across now. Couple from North End over. Oh, yeah. Winnicunit. Conan, Alvern. No, it's good to see racing like this this point in the season. I feel like we're starting to get closer to that championship mark. The weather's yeah. kind of turned a little bit and we can start uh, maybe getting a little bit of adrenaline going on for some of these boys more than what they've had. I'm starting to get a good idea of what a, a state championship results are going to be like and who's going to be battling it out for, for the titles. I imagine watching a race like this, it, it kind of gets your, your engine firing a little bit. You hope it's yeah! this? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sorry, a lot. It's all right. Again, we've got a lot of excitement from a lot of people right now. As we get to that 20 minute mark, we've had a lot of guys under that 20 today. That's a lot, a lot of, of under 16, the top, top four or five. It's going to be a lot of happy varsity boys. Oh, yeah. Good news for coaches as well. They probably got a little bit clearer of a picture. I know uh, some of the JV races earlier had some fast times as well, so we might see some jockeying for JV varsity spots because of that.
Yeah, this is definitely a meet where a lot of teams are looking to finalize their finalize their teams in their top seven. Yeah, and it yeah. So there's like two weeks until the state. Or yeah, we're we're getting close. We're getting close. And it looks like that uh, mad chaotic dash is past us. So once again, this is New Hampshire CrossCountry.com. We can see an awesome looking race coming down here. They were three wide, now they're making it a four man race to the finish. Everyone going for under 21 here. A lot of them happy with that. A couple more battles. Again, we're seeing these battles at Battle of the Border, pitting Massachusetts versus New Hampshire. We are in Hudson, New Hampshire, home of Alvern High School. This has been your 2021 Battle of the Border Boys Varsity Race. Thanks again to Runner's Alley as well as Bees Tees over in Keene as well as Manchester, New Hampshire. And with these boys finishing it up, we're going to finish it up for today. Go see if we can't find some interviews. Great job, great day of racing from all.